Love of country is not unique to Americans, but in a democracy, sending citizens to war requires far more than a dictator's order. In 1861, men on both sides of the conflict were willing to lay down their lives for what they had believed to be right. Southerners fought for states' rights in a society built upon human slavery, which many considered the natural order of the universe. When the war started, few volunteers in the Northern Army marched off to end slavery, but many were ready to fight and die to preserve the Union. One such soldier was Major Sullivan Ballou of the 2nd Regiment, Rhode Island Volunteers. Then, 32 years old, Ballou had become, became a lawyer and was very successful. He and his wife, Sarah, wanted to build a better life for their two boys, Edgar and William. An ardent Republican and devoted supporter of Abraham Lincoln, Blue volunteered in the spring of 1861, and on June 19th, he and his men left Providence, Rhode Island for Washington, D.C. He wrote the following letter to his wife from a camp just outside the nation's capital. And it is at once a passionate love letter as well as a profound meditation on the meaning of the Union. It caught national importance 129 years after he wrote it, when it was read on the widely watched television series, The Civil War, produced by Ken Burns. The beauty of the language, as well as the passion of the sentiments touched by popular imagination, brought home to Americans once again what the defense of democracy entailed. July 14. 1861, Clarence Clark, Washington, D.C. Dear Sarah, the indications are very strong that we shall move in a few days, perhaps tomorrow. At last, I feel that I should not be able to write to you again. I feel impelled to write a few lines that might fall under your eye when I am no more. I have no misgivings about or lack of confidence in the cause in which I am engaged. And my courage does not halt or falter. I know how American civilization now leans upon the triumph of the government, and how great a debt we owe to those who went before us through the blood and suffering of the revolution. And I am willing, perfectly willing, to lay down all my joys in this life to help maintain this government and to pay that debt. Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me with mighty cables that nothing but omnipotence could break. And yet my love of country comes over me like a strong wind and buries me irresistibly with all these chains to the battlefield. The memories of blissful moments I have spent with you keep coming, creeping over me, and I feel most grateful to God and you that I have enjoyed them for so long. And how hard it is for me to give them up and burn to ashes the hopes and for future years when God willing, we might still have lived and loved together and seen our sons grown up to an honorable manhood around us. If I do not return, my dear Sarah, never forget how much I loved you, nor then let my last breath escapes me on the battlefield, it will whisper your name. Forgive my many faults and the many pains I have caused you. How thoughtless, how foolish I have sometimes been. But oh, Sarah, if the dead can come back to this earth and flit unseen around those they love, I shall always be with you in the brightest day and in the darkest night, always. Always, and when the soft breeze upon your cheek, it shall be my breath as the cool air fans your throbbing temple. It shall be my spirit passing by. Sarah, do not mourn me dead. Think I am gone and wait for me that we should be again. Ironically, Sullivan Ballou's letter was never mailed. Ballou wrote the letter on July 14th while awaiting orders that would take him to Manassas, Virginia, where he and 27 of his men would die one week later at the first battle of Bull Run. This now famous letter would be found among the soldiers' effects 
when Governor William Sprague of Rhode Island traveled to Virginia to retrieve the remains of the state's sons who had fallen in battle. When he died, his wife was 24 years old. She later moved to New Jersey to live out her life with her son, William, and never remarried. She died at age 80 in 1917. Sullivan and Sarah Ballou are buried next to each other at Swan Point Cemetery in Providence, Rhode Island. There are no known living descendants.